Okay, welcome to the Troy Planning Commission meeting for July 12, 2017. Please call the roll. Mr. Caffers? Here. Mayor? Here. Mr. Wolke? Here. Mr. Titterington? Here. Mrs. Mahan? Here. Mr. McGarry? Mr. Fort? Here. We have a quorum. Okay, previously delivered to us were the minutes of our June 14th meeting. Are there any additions, corrections, or deletions to those minutes? Hearing none, I'll entertain a, motion, entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Motions or support? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? They stand accepted. First matter before the commission is the historic district application for 116 South Market Street. Does staff have a report? Yes, we do. Okay, go ahead. Lindsay Woodruff of Pacamama, which is at 116 South Market Street, is proposing to install an awning at um, on the storefront at 116 South Market. Um, the awning will be black canvas and it will be above the storefront and a sample of the material is available not the paint color just the bike there you go the awning will be 18 foot by 3 foot the bottom of the frame will be 7 feet 1 inch from the sidewalk with a 7 inch balance after speaking with the business owner, Ms. Woodruff stated that she does carry insurance that will cover any issues with the awning. She also stated that the property owner for Sons Development also carries insurance covering the building. Staff recommends approval because the proposed awning meets all the City of Troy code standards. There are awnings located throughout the downtown and the proposed colors will not detract from the look of the building. Any questions of staff? Nope. Mr. Turnerton? Uh, number one, so just to clarify, there's no signage on that. There's no signage on the awning, just plain so, on. Okay, secondly, I don't know if I missed this, but I don't see any kind of letter from the building owner. He signed the application. He signed it. Uh, that was good enough, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions of staff? I move for approval. Motion second. Approved. I'm sorry, who's second? Mr. Wilkie. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. Mayor? Yes. Mr. Wilkie? Yes. Mr. Chetterington? Yes. This is Mahan? Yes. Mr. Force? Yes. Mr. Caffrey? Yes. It's approved. Next, we have a historic district application for 21 North Oxford Street for the installation of a fence. Does the staff have a report? Yes, we do. Rex Maggart, who is the property owner of 21 North Oxford, is also in the audience with us today, <coughs> is proposing to install fencing in three different locations on the property. The site plan in your packet shows the different locations where Mr. Maggart is proposing to locate the fence. The fence is a metal open style decorative fence and he will be painting the fence with weatherall paint in the color Santa Fe N, which is that, the bottom color, the one marked with the little black, right here. there you go. Staff recommends approval based on the following. The proposed fence meets the City of Troy fencing requirements. The fencing will add a pleasing architectural feature to the property and the proposed color will not detract from the look of the building. Any questions of staff? I'll start things out. How high is the fence going to be? Real quick. It looks like it's very tall. Excellent question. How high would the fence be, Mr. Maggart? I believe it's uh, right at 38 inches. Okay. And our max is 42? 42. 42 in the front. Okay, let me ask a stupid question. If you didn't know how high it was, how did you know it passed the sign? Or code? Well, because the application is not included in the packet, it's downstairs that has the height of the fence. Okay. It's been a week since I did the report. And, and just to be clear, the fencing in the back will go 24 feet. In the front, we have a six foot installment and a three foot installment. And that's it. Is that right? That's correct. Any other questions of staff? Move for approval. Second. The motion and support is given. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Wolke? Yes. Mr. Titterington? Yes. This is Mayhan? Yes. Mr. Forrest? Yes. Mr. Peppers? Yes. Mayor? Yes. Approved. Next matter before the commission. Uh, 
is the recommendation of uh, the gentleman on the road banners. I brought this up some time ago because the planning commission had approved that for a limited period of time and we had been past that period of time. And Mr. Davis, did you have a, a discussion item you want to give us? Yeah, um, not much to add to what you stated. Uh, it was past the time. We did reach out at the request of the planning commission to the uh, owners of the building, which is the Troy Masonic Temple. Uh, we do have an email that was handed out with that, which shows that at their July 6th meeting, they did vote uh, for a one-year extension to keep those up. At that point, we will go ahead and reevaluate, get another permission from them if the, if the banners remain in good conditions as they are today. So are you suggesting that we take action? Yeah, it's just requested that you allow them to remain up for, uh, from one year from today, and okay. we'll keep on the one-year schedule. Since the last action of the Planning Commission was to go ahead and grant a period of time, I think it would be incumbent upon us to go ahead and provide for another action today to permit it to be up for another one-year period. Is that what you're suggesting? Yes. I'll make a motion that we allow it to stay through the 2018 year. Let's do it that way. Cal so we're on a calendar year, year yes. Okay. Is there a support for that motion? Second. There's a motion to support. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Titterington? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? <coughs> yes. Mr. Forrest? Yes. Mr. Cappers? Yes. Mayor? Yes. Mr. Wolke? Yes. It is approved, and we will note that Mr. McGarry is now present. But came in. I apologize for my absence. Oh, that's okay. No problem. We are on number five of the agenda, Mr. McGarry. Oh, Presentation regarding MKSK study related to the downtown and river corridor. Mm -hmm. Mr. Carrington, I think you're going to. I will. Um, uh, I could I just once again yeah. welcome the beautification committee, however, to the presentation? Yeah. Good, Mr. Carrington. Flip the door. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we are, uh, uh, I, I am speaking to you as a member of the steering committee of the downtown uh, riverfront strategic development plan. And at this point, um, we are still involved in the process. The consultant is still doing their work, but um, since we have, uh, they have generated a number of recommendations and we continue to ask for a lot of input um, now is in, in, in the recent past and, and in the future, we, we are uh, uh, making the rounds and want, uh, doing presentations just to get, uh, to get that feedback and to discuss you know, where we think we want to go um, in the short and long, uh, in long term related to the redevelopment and continued uh, sustainability of the uh, downtown riverfront corridor. The, uh, the project uh, came about as a result of the uh, ABC in, uh, contest, America's Best Communities contest, which I believe was, what, three years ago now, mm -hmm. um, that uh, Frontier Communications ran and, and the, uh, the city was a quarter finalist. As part of the, uh, the uh, exercise, if you will, going through that process, we identified several initiatives that, uh, and priorities that we wanted to focus on, whether we went any further or not, one of which was to, uh, to do a strategic plan of this corridor. Um, the corridor, um, let me see where I've got the, uh, there's, there's the map of the corridor with the uh, backing of the chairs in the way. Um, that gives you a general idea of the area that was that has been and continues to be studied. So when we uh, uh, started the project, um, the uh, the goal was to again to come up with a strategic development plan. Uh, it is a plan that encompasses uh, anywhere from this summer through uh, ten years or more, uh, and is a. Uh, a it will be a, an evolving living document, much like our comprehensive plan is. Uh, just for, uh, for your edification, the, uh, uh, the players that are involved in the steering committee include the city, uh, city representatives, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, the uh, Troy Development Council, Main Street, 
and the Troy and the Duke Foundations, uh, several uh, downtown uh, business and property owners. Uh, we usually <laughs> find people for that. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, and the uh, and the consultant team, uh, which is led by MKSK Studios, uh, they are. Uh, Headquartered in Columbus, they have uh, the the office that we're working with primarily is out of Covington, Kentucky. BLDG uh, design firm, which is in Covington, Kentucky. Green Street Analytics, which did a lot of the market research, uh, and uh, LJB Engineering. Uh, I'm supposed to get closer. Sorry. As ML, uh, MKSK has led the process, they've broken it down into three major components. Uh, understanding the, the background, the, the analysis part of it. Uh, idea testing, where they come up with recommendations and they want to bounce those ideas off of us. And in a couple of cases, you'll see, actually go to demonstration projects. And then ultimately deciding on what kind of game plan we want to we wanna have and then um, figure out how, how we're going to implement it and over what time frame and with what kind of, uh, of actions. To understand uh, really the scope of this project and how people felt about this area and the community in whole, uh, as a whole, um, MKSK conducted uh, quite a number of focus groups. They were extremely impressed with the level of participation, um, the variety of community stakeholders that were involved. As you can see, uh, focus groups included, uh, actually it's about, I believe, 16 groups at this point, and uh, they were probably, there may be uh, one or two more. Uh, 120 participants is probably closer to 140 since this slide was done. We've had uh, a couple of more focus groups uh, conducted with uh, HR, uh, business HR folks and some others. Uh, survey, uh, there was a, a survey that was sent. There have been several surveys, uh, but the major survey that was sent uh, received feedback from 130 different respondents. And of course, as this community is um, well noted for uh, it is a small town and so everybody knows everybody else and so we continue to get anecdotal feedback um, we have social media uh, that we uh, are continuing to roll out and and make more public uh, but we invite feedback from them that as well there was a, a stakeholder meeting as well as a public meeting uh, two, two meetings actually on uh, June 12th out at the Bravo Room, um, one in the afternoon and one in the evening uh, as well. I'm not going to dwell on, on this slide. I don't think this should be any surprise to anybody. Uh, when we received the community feedback, uh, best places included the square, the arena, Treasure Island, um, the courthouse, the library, our, our iconic features. Uh, the worst places, um, and I hesitate to use the, worst, the, the word worst, that was actually, I'll blame MKSK for that word, but uh, they're the ones that really probably in the grand scheme of things need the most TLC, uh, including the East Water Street section and, uh, around the industrial sites. Uh, the southeast section of downtown, which I wouldn't say is the worst uh, pro uh, area. But it is an area that probably needs some refreshing that we haven't focused on in the past and that, you know, with some infrastructure improvements, some basic improvements that we're, uh, we're doing now, plus a concentration of these efforts in the future, you know, that can bring that area into, there, there's a lot of architecture, there's a lot of assets out there that we're really not capturing and we're really not uh, uh, making good use of. And then uh, what we call uh, confusing parking, some of which uh, we're hoping to, uh, to clarify with the traffic and, and parking study that 
will be rolled out later this month, early next month. Opportunities and priorities are, of course, going to be related to uh, uh, the priority areas I just mentioned. Uh, but the opportunities, of, uh, as, as we all should know, uh, involve the riverfront and, of course, Water Street um, from Treasure Island, all, or from uh, yeah, Treasure Island all the way to uh, uh, the Van Cleves area. Uh, the industrial sites along Water Street and then the other areas that I just mentioned uh, amongst the quote-unquote worst places. Um, I will note at this point, this is a, a very quick overview, although it can be as long as you'd like to as, in, as far as back and forth. It is 16 slides. The, uh, the presentation that was given by MKSK is 97 slides. I figured that... Uh, you didn't want to see all 97 of them today. Uh, at the end of this discussion, though, uh, we do have the, uh, the websites that you can go to uh, on Troy Main Street's website, as well as the city's website, where the entire presentation is located. Uh, because I'm going to, you know, this market analysis slide is really a summary of a number of slides where they really dove into our demographics, our housing stock, uh, et cetera. But this, this summary shows you that uh, what, what they've found, uh, that uh, millennials do prefer uh, rentals, smaller homes. They like more mobility. Um, and I apologize to those millennials because I understand some of them don't like to be called millennials. Generation Z, I think, is the uh, alternate word. but. Uh, phrase uh, but they you know they, they prefer smaller uh, more portable I guess uh, portability if you will uh, they like to spend more time outside than they do inside I mean there's a generation and and I certainly am among them there they like the bigger houses the house is the you know the primary uh, location for the family millennials are a little different they like their outdoor recreation they like their they like being in the outdoors, so they're they're less inclined to have the bigger bigger structures. Well, in our downtown area, we do well in the area, and, and, and as you can see, have an excess of uh, uh, the larger detached homes. Not, not not large, but relatively large. But we lack in uh, the apartments, um, smaller downtown type living residential uh, stock. Um, just some other points that were made during the market analysis. Um, our land use regulations, and this speaks directly to the Planning Commission's future participation, our regulations, our laws, um, you know, they are geared towards standard zoning. And so as we move forward with this, we may want to look at tweaking that, particularly in the uh, B3 uh, zoning district, which is primarily the, the, the predominant zoning district of this area that was studied. Um, employers are uh, also not finding employees. Uh, in the southwest uh, part, south and, and west part of the uh, state, Miami County down to Montgomery County and all, I want to say 13 counties around, um, it's, it's estimated that there are 12,000 industrial jobs that are going unfilled. So our biggest priority uh, nowadays is how do we attract workers, families uh, into, into Troy to provide um, competent, skilled, um, on-time, and drug-free workforce for those, uh, for those employers. Uh, because they can't Whereas they might, might like to and, and desire to expand their footprint in Troy, they can't do that because of the limitations on uh, employee availability. And when it comes down to it, I mean, this study was $142,000, of which the city put in 25000 and these stakeholders all contributed as well. Uh, our primary goal is to answer, help answer that fourth bullet. Um, it is for us first and foremost an economic development issue uh, and it's one that, uh, that that is our overall focus in doing this study 
and implementing the recommendations uh, in the future. Uh, lack of bus service was another uh, key point that they made. Um, we have a point-to-point uh, -point service. We don't have a general service like they do in, uh, in Montgomery County, down in Cincinnati, some of the bigger cities. Um, we have a demand-based system. Um, and uh, we're looking at other ways to, uh, to maybe get some incentives out there, working with the state and the regional uh, folks to, to broaden that. But that was a, uh, a key point that they, they made to us. And it speaks to the uh, transportation alternatives and the lack thereof that there are, uh, not only in Troy, but in the area, but specifically uh, within and around the downtown. So from the feedback, from the um, uh, digesting of the, uh, uh, the market uh, analysis, uh, the steering committee came up with the, uh, the vision that you see here. Um, ultimately, when it comes down to dollars and cents, the third, bill, uh, the third bullet uh, is to you know, grow the market value in the downtown. Uh, provide that those economics so that private investment can lead the way uh, we do not have the resources nor do we have the desire to underfund uh, or underwrite all of the recommendations that you're going to see in the future nor do we have any business doing that frankly most of this is outside of our core competence um, and and uh, so ways that the Planning Commission the council and the staff can incentivize and create the atmosphere that makes these uh, properties more valuable will continue to increase the attractiveness to, uh, to private investment. Um, and while uh, the Generation Z folks are a key demographic that we want to attract, um, part of the market analysis showed that, you know, there, there's a large segment of our population that's growing, that's, uh, that, that's more experienced, if you will, older, and uh, are empty nesters, are retired, and they have told us that there aren't a lot of options for them to stay, to downsize and stay in the community. And this study and the recommendations, uh, some of the recommendations at least, are geared towards providing that, uh, that kind of footprint for them too. So jumping right into the recommendations, um, MKSK using their best practices because they've they've done this kind of work in many different communities, uh, large and small. Um, I, I will say as anecdotally that um, they were very impressed with the level of commitment, the level of participation, uh, the size of the focus groups that we had, the participants that were in those focus groups. Uh, the level of feedback that they, they continue to receive but received uh, in, in the initial part of the project, uh, as well as the amount of events, programs, projects, and the activity that we have. Um, they were um, very enthusiastic because many of the communities of our size that reach out to them for this kind of a study are on the decline or they, they lack really anything go <coughs> anything going on and uh, and don't even have the basics like we do and and uh, so their comment to us was that you know we as a city in our downtown riverfront corridor act uh, not as a city with a population of 25,000 but more like a population of 50 to 75 or or even even bigger um, so that was that was uh, very reassuring to us, although we we knew that we have a lot more to do. Um, they were confident that we were starting at, at a at a position of strength, and and uh, uh, just able to add to that. So uh, they came up with a series of recommendations, um, understanding that we have limited resources, that we have limited capacity. Uh, to uh, to do everything at once, um, they have broken down the f uh, and I, I include these on these slides in the in the next slides. 
um, zero to two years, two to five years, five to ten, and then ten plus years, the kind of recommendations and the kind of thing, uh, priorities that we ought to work on. Uh, again, this is a living document. Nothing is set in stone. It's still being finalized. It's still, it's really still being developed. I mean, everything is still on the table. It's, this is not a fait accompli. This is, uh, it, it's very easy to shift priorities if we need to. Well, not very easy, but it's, it's relatively easy. Recognizing that, particularly with our more experienced long-term uh, Trojans, uh, some of these recommendations uh, are game-changing, if you will, and, uh, and, and may be uh, more than just a little startling. Uh, they suggested, and they built into the work plan, the ability to take a couple of the recommendations that they have and create demonstration projects out of them. They called them activations, okay? Uh, and so the steering committee picked two, the first one being the activation of what, what they call uh, the Cherry Street Commons. And that area is the, north, the section of North Cherry Street between Main Street and Water Street. The idea being that uh, if it became a permanent commons area, uh, it would uh, cease to be a, a road, a section of road that is traveled by, by vehicle. Uh, at least from the section of Main Street to the north elevation of the buildings. So we'd still have continued access to the parking lots to the north of, of those uh, properties, the furniture store and the, uh, and the Mayflower. Um, but it would, in essence, become a, uh, an active uh, alley, if you will, where much of the activity, uh, the current activity, I will say, on Prati Plaza could be moved over to Cherry Street. Um, there's the, the steering committee uh, came up with three activation events this summer related to Cherry Street Commons. The first one being Friday night. We have a concert scheduled that would have, nor, would have been on Prouty Plaza. It's a Troy Main Street sponsored concert. It is moving over to Cherry Street. Um, the stage, the showmobile will be put in place right uh, behind those two buildings um, towards Water Street, project out, the stage will open up towards Main Street. Uh, it will be barricaded off at, at Main Street so that vehicular traffic can't plow into anybody. And the concert will occur between the two walls on, in, the, in the street. At the same time, uh, uh, Prati Plaza would continue to be a, a plaza, but in the long run uh, would be developed more as a plaza. There is no intention on selling that land. Uh, there is no intention on building a building on that land. It would continue to be a plaza, but as part of the long-term strategic plan, if you read the entire 97 slide report from uh, our slideshow from MKSK, the idea is to create, uh, part of the idea is to create common areas, public gathering spaces, ability for people to congregate, uh, you know, buy their food from the restaurant, walk outside and sit down outside and, and eat, listen to, listen to music, do whatever. Uh, and Prouty Plaza could be improved with you know landscaping, pavers, uh, uh, streetscape furniture like picnic tables, etc., uh, to be just that, and still be connected to uh, the 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 concerts and the other activity that that could be going on at uh, in Cherry Street. Uh, with this activation on Friday, uh, we will I, I believe that they worked it out with uh, Mike Caldwell that there will be some speakers and they will pipe the music over to the Prouty Plaza site for those that want to sit. You've, you may have seen that we do have some picnic tables up at uh, uh, on Prouty Plaza just to get people start thinking about it. Um, 
the idea there is that with Prati Plaza being part of uh, being right there on the corner of the two state highways, uh, it's it's busy. Uh, you do get crowd overflow sometimes in the street. Uh, most of the time, we try to anticipate that by closing off the road, uh, the roads and the square, uh, which isn't always the most uni uh, universally popular thing that we can do. Uh, but it sure it's certainly a lot safer. Um, a little more intimate with some of the smaller concerts if we do it on Cherry Street. Uh, it, it opens up maybe some pop-up businesses on the sides of the, uh, the furniture store and the, uh, and the Mayflower. It may, uh, may offer some additional uses for those two buildings in the long run. Um, and the noise factor is one of the complaints that we hear on Prati Plaza as you're, as you're watching you know, a concert or an event there with uh, being state highway we do get semi traffic that most of the time can navigate the circle and every once in a while results in us having to replace a historic looking street light but a street pole but um, so that's that's the idea there uh, I'll, I'll uh, come back to Prati Plaza uh, to show that we're not just talking in the long run of just having lands you know brick pavers and having it an open space uh, but there are enhancements that uh, will continue to use Prati Plaza, uh, I think, in the spirit of which uh, spirit which it was intended. The other uh, activation that we're going to do this summer and then probably expand next summer uh, is uh, the activation of bike lanes. Uh, MKSK calls them cycle tracks. In connecting the riverfront corridor, you have to remember that that corridor extends as far north uh, to, as to Treasure Island and east to Van Cleves and past Spinnaker in that area. There is a disconnect between one end to the other. There is no easy, rational, well thought out and well laid out way to get from Treasure Island on a bike, jogging, walking into downtown. Uh, if you think about it, if you've, if you've ridden on the uh, asphalt path, the, the rec trail, you come to Adams Street from Treasure Island, you have to turn left, then you cross Adams Street and to keep on the wreck trail, you're on the you know you're on the north side of the of the uh, river uh, across the levee. Um, we are working on some stenciling and, and some signage to to allow people who want to stay on. Uh, sorry for the confusion, but it's called uh, the designation is uh, Route 25. That's our uh, wreck trail designation. So if you want to stay on the wreck trail. It'll direct you to the left, but then if you want to go downtown, we're going to direct you to the right. But once you get there, uh, probably the least attractive option is to put walkers, joggers, and bicyclists onto Main Street. Uh, so Water Street is the alternative of choice, and so um, installing a temporary bike uh, bike lanes on West Water Street is what we are going to be doing in the next, I'd say, week or two. Uh, we're going to try to have them up and, and uh, visible by August 1st. Uh, with the Cherry Street activations, I mentioned the movie. The movie is on Friday. Uh, we also have a, I'm sorry, a concert on Friday. Uh, we also have a movie that will be a family movie, bike themed, that will be August 12th. Uh, that's a Saturday. And so uh, what they're planning between Troy Main Street and the city is to have some events and some activities and some downtown business participation related to that event, uh, some, of, you know, some of which will obviously be downtown, but uh, some <coughs> pre-movie events would be on Treasure Island with kind of a group bike ride down 
to the movie. Um, to do that, we need to have a marked path uh, to, to accomplish that. I'm anticipating what you're going to ask, but go ahead. <laughs> I don't know if what you're anticipating or not, but many years ago, back when I worked here, we talked about putting a bridge, a bike, footpath bridge north of Adam Street. In fact, I think Joe Reardon gathered some of the material together to do that. That was uh, down towards Duke Park. Yeah, that right. was between Treasure Island and Duke Park, yes. Okay. And that is, is on the longer term plan. Um, uh, that doesn't help us with the downtown connection, but it does connect Treasure Island to Duke Park. Latest estimates on that, I think, are four to five million dollar range because it's not just one bridge, it's two bridges. Uh, Joe had procured some steel beams. Those beams sat long enough that they can't be used. Um, so that, that is still on the long-term plan, but let me come back to that one as, as far as access. Um, um, what I thought you were gonna ask about was um, by doing the water street, we eliminate parking on the south side of West Water. Uh, we did some windshield surveys over about a week, week and a half period. Uh, you know, and given the fact that that's right there at the county county operations, Tuesdays and Thursdays in particular are, are relative, relatively busy. Um, that that eliminates 26 parking spots uh, for them on the south side. We had a discussion with the county. They were, of course, concerned about that. Uh, when we talked to them, though, we have found uh, that uh, we have excessive yellow paint on some of the on some of the side streets and and on Water Street, and so we can gain some spots there. Uh, we can also gain a row of parallel parking on at least one of the streets. So we get back immediately. Get back doing anything else 21 of those 26 spots the other thing that we don't do that we know will gain at least the other five spots is um, there are no markings delineating parking on street parking spots on water street short street oxford any of those spaces much like you see in some of our par parallel spots and as well as angled spots on market and main uh, so as a result, it's first comes first serve. You know, somebody gets there, they park. The next person that parks is going to leave maybe a little extra room because nobody likes to parallel park and nobody likes to be too close and risk getting, you know, dinged. But we are going to stencil the uh, the standard parking spots, and and we know just again from walking up and down the street for a week and week and a half that there are additional spots to gain um, by, by people being more efficient with the way they park. Well, as I gather, the first two things you presented there, the Cherry Street and the bike uh, path, these are demonstration projects which can be undone if they don't turn out. Is that correct? If they are a complete disaster, we can certainly reverse them. Yes, absolutely. We're not making permanent improvements to Cherry Street to, to shut it down, for example. The, uh, the bike lanes, you'll see um, they, they've given us the, uh, uh, the measurements there. Those would be the ones that we would follow. Um, but when we stripe the bike lanes, they will be in street chalk. So they'll last for a little bit, but you know, they won't be the permanent thermal taping or the green paint that you see that, that lasts a few years, a couple years if not longer. So yes, they can be reversed. And we did tell the county that we we're gonna monitor the, the parking situation, you know, as part of this. Um, you know, this, this is, a, if you, again, if you go back to the, uh, the website and you look at the uh, 97 slides, there are 10 or 15 slides that talk about the cycle tracks and the, and the, uh, the, the rec trail loops that really do a good job of comprehensively connecting the downtown to uh, to the rec trail from both sides, not just from Treasure Island, but from the east side as well. So longer term, same same time frame, but not demo projects, but uh, recommendations that they are making 
uh, to us include uh, in the short term, and again, in the next zero to two years, probably the two-year time frame, um, Kohler, Wisconsin has a, an artist in re uh, residency uh, uh, program. And if you know Kohler, they do the fixtures and uh, the ceramics. They're, they're big into the ceramics. Uh, I'm sure we've all used them. We've all appreciated their ceramics. However, they created in Kohler, Wisconsin, a, an artist in residency program that is focused on ceramic artists. So they said, you know, you've got these areas, especially on the east side of town, what about developing a, a similar type program, but perhaps you focus on metalworking with our welding history here. Um, another idea that they came up with was, um, and, and if I have any final say so, this will not be the, the name that we use. <laughs> they call it the Troy Truck Yard. It's not going to be a semi drop lot. Uh, it is more like uh, one of the parking lots on the east side near the, uh, the railroad. Uh, you know, could be uh, on Friday nights a pop up gathering space, like an after work uh, spot where we have food trucks that are there and maybe some microbreweries bring their trailers in or there's a different one each week or something, you know, something along those lines. Um, again, to promote the public space, the outdoor recreation and being adjacent to the river would feature, uh, feature the Great Miami. Prouty Plaza redevelopment. This is kind of what I was talking about. Uh, they've got this included in the zero to two range. We're not married to these time frames yet. Uh, uh, in fact, we, uh, MKSK initially had some different time frames for some of these recommendations and after the June 12th uh, exercise, the public meeting, we were startled to, to learn that maybe we need to change some priorities earlier than later. And I'll, I'll, sorry for the teaser, but I'll get back to that one in a minute. But uh, regarding the Prouty Plaza redevelopment, as part of making it a gathering space and not abandoning you know, it's history as a, uh, um, an event generator, or uh, maybe not generator, but uh, uh, having events on it. You'll see that there's a, a small stage in the corner. Um, the art wall would not replace uh, the mural. That's not their intention there, but there may be some additional, you know, uh, use of that wall beyond just the mural without hurting the mural. Um, the, uh, the food and beverage pavilion could be a back of house to store some of the stuff that we typically have to truck in and out and trailer in every time we have an event. Um, the idea of public restrooms, big priority of the, of, of the mayor, but also has been a, um, a community request for a number of years. Those are the kind of things that we could develop uh, again over time. I would imagine the redevelopment of Prouty Plaza would depend upon the success of the Cherry Street yeah, program. Absolutely. Um, and, and again, all of this is going to require a lot more detail, a lot more design, and in some cases, some permissions from other entities, including but not limited to the park. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and so I probably should have put that big footnote there at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, so that's zero to two, two to five. Um, in two to five year window, uh, again, these are projects that if we had enough staff, some of them are pretty easy to do from a cost standpoint, but again, there's limited staff time, so you can only do so much to organize these things. And so you may see something in the two to five year range that uh, piques your interest and you say, well, why not do that in the zero to two? Well, the, these things can be moved around. One of them, um, in the two to five year time frame is the Water Street Marketplace. Uh, specifically, when they walked the, uh, uh, the old ITW site, now the uh, Kettering site, uh, they immediately noticed you couldn't miss the uh, Troy Lumber building. Um, I think they finally walked through that once, uh, but even before then, when they saw that, uh, when they saw that building, this recommendation came to mind, and, and what, it, what it would mirror is something along the lines of the Second Street Market in Dayton or Findlay Market in Cincinnati. 
Um, now, you know, that's contingent upon, number one, who owns the building at the, at the point that they might want to pursue something like this and what their personal priorities are. Uh, it, is, uh, it is Troy Lumberyard. It is still owned by the Troy Lumberyard, Joe Goodall. Um, and so, you know, obviously it's dependent on the property owner and, and uh, what kind of uses are, are, are ongoing there. Another uh, another recommendation that they've made, and again, this will take significant input and buy-in by the park board and others, is the idea of uh, creating a what they call the river district, and it it really goes to addressing um, the residential need, um, the apartment need, the smaller empty nester possibly even some mixed use need on the north side of the levee behind the sidewalk um, you know as far as behind the green space as possible um, just a concept so nothing's been penned and, and put on paper um, but between the arena and the uh, uh, in the area of the arena all the way to the uh, uh, to the stadium um, then, Larry, because the rec trail is on the north side, we have already started to uh, uh, explore the uh, feasibility, viability, and fundability, if that's a word, of uh, building a pedestrian bridge between that upper levee to, uh, to the downtown. Um, you know, nothing's been staked out, nothing's been engineered, nothing like that, but generally speaking, one of the logical places, first of all, would be to do a straight line since that's the least expensive. Um, second of all would be in the area of the, uh, the maybe between the court and the, uh, uh, the courthouse and the administration building, uh, because that's the, the, the bridge could terminate there at the sculpture right next to the uh, right near the uh, the brewery um, and then as as a logical extension of that at least in you know in someone's mind who's familiar with the uh, the area you cross the plaza the the, the, two, the two fountains uh, area and you're there at Plum Street across from uh, Main Street Plum Street being one of the wider side streets that we have, and it was on that list of uh, bike path cycle tracks that we mentioned that could be part of the activation project. Uh, project. So, you know, that's a pretty big, big concept. Um, when we did the dot, they call it a dot democracy, not my word. Uh, you know, putting the dots up on the uh, placards. And we did that exercise, or uh, the public did that exercise on June 12th, in the evening when they had the, uh, at the Bravo room. And so you had three choices. You had red dots, say, no, this is a stupid idea, don't do it. Uh, green dots saying, yeah, this is a good idea, go ahead. And blue dots that said, well, th yeah, this is a good idea, but why are you waiting so long? Um, the river district and the bridge design had more blue dots than green dots. It had quite a few of both, no red dots. So we looked at that and we thought, okay, well, we figured that this was going to take years of debate and, you know, what are we going to do? Yeah, but so many different things. And here it was one of, probably the most popular recommendation um, of that evening. So haven't forgotten about Treasure Island Duke bridge um, but because of its relatively high cost it's it's a long-term plan this one uh, we have already just to be be getting into the uh, uh, the federal funding loop uh, started to engage an engineer to, to give us enough numbers so that we can submit an application through MVRPC uh, I wouldn't think that both would be urgent no well yeah right <laughs> Um, 
So MVRPC knows that we are going to be submitting. We've got until October 15th to submit something. Um, we've had some uh, initial conversations with ODOT since they would obviously be involved in it. Um, given the funding cycle that we're in, the federal money that would become available if this was awarded would be about five years out. So it makes some sense. And, and, but if we waited any longer then we'd be a whole year off and and given the <coughs> the amount of uh, the number of blue and green dots we figured we better not delay in at least getting our application in Patrick, uh, let me talk to you about those blue and green dots you're talking about the was the the duke expansion as a part of that presentation so did it receive any dots or was duke it expansion from the truck treasure island oh that bridge was not, not included in there no is there that is that is on the that is here it may, it may have been on a on a board i don't remember is, is it's there, in a longer the point is, is is there any reason why we can't also apply for funds for that span at the same time we apply for this yes there is and the reason is is because we know you know to get maximum points you need to have uh 40 percent non-federal money in that would be, you know, city resources, maybe private investment as part of any developer commitment, uh, that kind of thing. And so, knowing that this bridge would not be that inexpensive, we had to prioritize. But we did ask and to MKSK to make sure that they included the tr the Treasure Island Duke Bridge on their list of, of things so that it's not. So the people know that's not off the table. Yeah. Again, it goes back to the resource limitations. That's really what it is. Uh, the residential living and condo rental pool is, uh, I guess, their their take on the you know if you go uh, down to uh, Myrtle Beach or some of those uh, resort areas or vacation spots. You know, you buy a house and, and you have a management firm that will rent it out on a weekly basis, um, an Airbnb, that kind of concept, which apparently work in some communities. And MKSK felt with our, with the number of, uh, the, the amount of business that we have here, the amount of corporate uh, uh, leaders that come into town and are stationed here, particularly from overseas, for periods of time anywhere from six months to a couple of years that there would be a demand and a market for this and that's something that they thought that maybe we could uh, uh, collectively pursue as we grow the amount of residential space on our second and third stories uh, in the downtown district the five to ten year plan uh, that's where the uh, the river district the connection into downtown, the bridge, uh, you know, depending on uh, assuming that that uh, project would be a viable project, acceptable project, then, you know, it may phase differently. So it could be a multi year concept. Uh, the GMRT is the Great Miami Recreational Trail. Um, that's what that's short for. The, uh, the other interesting concept that they uh, that MKSK uh, threw out at us was uh, reconstructing reconfiguring uh, the square the roundabout had a couple of options one of which uh, we're actually going to talk about uh, talk about elements of doing as part of the traffic and park parking study uh, but would retain the circular way that we do things uh, but change the quads and the amount of parking that's available there uh, look at a road diet to go from four lanes down to two lanes and other assorted improvements uh, to slow slow things down and, and make the the center where the fountain is a more usable active space is frankly Right now, if we see somebody walking around in the green space of the fountain area, we are going to ask a police officer to go out and, and, and ask 
you know, what's what's going on because you know they got had to play some serious Frogger to get across the uh, the road to get to the fountain in the first place. Um, that was option A. Option B uh, would be uh, similar to uh, the example that they drew was a, I think it's Second Street or is it Fourth Street in Pittsburgh, and um, where they they eliminate the quads and the parking within the quads, and instead of a roundabout, it becomes a, I guess, a square about, if you will, um, where the uh, the traffic pattern is uh, becomes a uh, a right angle square, um, and we would change the elevation of the area around the fountain flatten all that out as much as we could and that becomes the center gathering space the event space you could have the strawberry festival for example entirely in that space now there you know there's some reservations if that's a five to ten year plan I don't know that might be a ten plus year plan I don't know because it would need to uh, uh, to eliminate or to find alternatives to the state routes we'd have to reroute the state routes um, we would be eliminating all of the parking on the quads we'd regain some of it on the street uh, with on-street parking around the square about uh, but there would be a net loss of spaces uh, it would be just overall a very radical change uh, that's why it's probably in the uh, 10 year <laughs> time frame um, if uh, if that was a, uh, a still a consideration uh, East Water Street redevelopment uh, reuse of uh, industrial sites uh, you know converting some of those uh, properties into more mixed use uh, apartment living uh, or residential living on the upper floors uh, smaller uh, pop-up shops if you will on the uh, on the first floor and this this speaks to our zoning code and, and how we may want to look at modifications in the future uh, also they talk about um, they identify you know if the uh, the building plan at the schools as they have uh, recommended goes through what happens with Van Cleves what happens with Kyle um, so those are some of the uh, things that they think that we should be working on at that time the 10 plus year thing again this is 10 plus years which is always uh, very very speculative uh, creating boutique hotel spaces uh, you know one of the um, indications on uh, one of the slides with the map is uh, the North Market Street ball fields and they've designated that for redevelopment just as a recommendation saying that well in the future if you find a need for for hotel space that would be an area to do it in. now of course uh, we'd have to figure out where to move the, the ball fields from um, or two rather um, so again these are just thought provokers let's call them uh, dedicated parking facilities is is that the time that we start looking at a uh, parking structure uh, they said that ideally if we were to put a parking structure up uh, behind the Cherry Street Commons there converting that parking lot into a multi-level structure would probably be the most ideal candidate at least uh, as we sit here today uh, facing Water Street or having the entrance exit at, uh, to Water Street with the back of the of the building uh, acting as a backdrop for a stage if it's you know permanent stage or a, uh, a screen if you will for movies uh, just a, a nice backdrop senior themed housing uh, with the River District um, if you continue to move to the east uh, to Water Street given that you've got the Senior Citizen Center would that be a good area to add some senior themed housing and what and what 
and, and what uh, what that would look like who knows but these are just some ideas they threw out expansion of the ITW site this is not the Kettering site they're talking about the uh, uh, the Ridge Avenue site which yes is an active active business uh, they've you know they've been moving some operations back and forth within Troy at that point 10 years from now they're just saying you know look at that site because it's still a key site in the downtown adjacent area in the area that they studied and it has a lot of potential because it's a big campus um, the Treasure Island Duke Park Bridge design there there uh, there's that again um, the and then completing the bicycle network this is the uh, map that I wanted to show you um, because this shows uh, not only where the existing trail network is but where we can extend the asphalt bring stubs out um, create bike share stations uh, convert some uh, perhaps some local assets into public uh, open spaces particularly on the southeast side of this uh, the study area um, but the interconnectivity uh, between and to and from the downtown is really important and that is uh, interconnectivity in terms of non-vehicular traffic that is and so that's what we're lacking and that's what riverfront communities with a strong bike friendly commitment like we have uh, it, w that's where we're lacking and there are ways that we can do it over the long term that uh, uh, that MKSK has laid out for us so those are all the ideas that they have uh, deciding what to do and when is our next step uh, immediately though as I mentioned we want to activate the demonstration projects specifically uh, Cherry Street Commons uh, September 28th is the third event that we're going to have and that is a uh, dining event it will be a ticketed event uh, the cost of which will just offset the the cost of having the event not a fundraiser or anything like that um, the uh, the event will be focused on uh, up to 150 people long tables uh, outdoor public dining event or try to get you know rubbernecking etc to get people thinking about that as a site uh, whether they're participating or just walking by September 28th is a Thursday night uh, the idea is is that we would invite local chefs as well as chefs that have uh, grown up in Troy but left Troy and are now chefs in other communities we know of uh, uh, the, the Covington Hotel Covington Kentucky Hotel that chef is a Troy uh, homegrown Trojan if you will um, and so uh, we've reached out to him he, he mentioned that he wanted to be part of this we want to uh, confirm that with him uh, our downtown restaurants we've reached out to them we've had some commitments we've got some outstanding conversations to have with them but the idea is that they would develop the menu it would be kind of a farm to table you know as much of the as many of the ingredients that can be grown locally we would the chef, uh, each chef would do a separate course describe that course where it came from maybe talk uh, a minute or two about what Troy has meant to them etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, restructuring the on-street parking on West Water Street uh, we will be putting signs up as at the same time as we will be striping saying as of August 1st no parking on the south side um, working with the uh, the county commissioners and their staff to make sure that their employees are as educated as possible uh, there'll be a transition they'll have to get used to it we understand that and then uh, we want to stripe the uh, bike lanes uh, hopefully a couple weeks earlier than the movie to get people thinking about it or at least seeing that it's there and driving away from it not into it um, on the horizon uh, what we have what we noticed in this study uh, in in the exercise with the uh, the focus groups 
was, uh, MKSK and, and BLDG especially noticed that you know there's a lot of enthusiasm uh, everything was positive when people were describing Troy but it was really difficult for people to tell a story about Troy and put their finger on why they love Troy what what Troy means to them etc um, and so as they thought about it uh, and we talked about it they realized that you know it's been almost 15 years since we did a branding. Uh, the branding that was done was not a comprehensive exercise. My understanding is back then it resulted in the Troy, Ohio, USA logo, um, which has been a very effective logo for us internationally in particular. Uh, but has its time come and gone? Is it time to do something new? Is it time to freshen up that logo? But not just that logo, create a create a brand, uh, tagline, um, a story, if you will, that speaks to the community and you know who Troy is so that when we market ourselves in magazines and media and, uh, and in other venues, we have that story to tell, and it's a unique story. Um, uh, BLDG is doing that now for us. The same stakeholders are participating in that process um, as well. Uh, we've heard two of the three phases of that project, and they, I think everybody agrees that they are on the right track. Um, we hope to have that rebranding done, or the, the goal is to have that rebranding done at the same time as this rolls out completely so that it's done um, uh, together and not in, in staggered steps. ML, uh, MKSK is estimating the uh, costs of some of the concepts that are in here, the ones that are we know are going to cost some money. I mentioned the bridge. We've actually we're in the process of engaging LJB to get us some engineered estimates so that we have something to uh, to submit with our grant application. So we'll actually have better numbers than just the concept costs on that part of it. Uh, they are going to be rendering some uh, more detailed drawings um, of some of the concepts. We've asked them to include the river district in that so that people have an idea, and not only on paper, but apparently they'll have some kind of three, 360 degree thing. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it sounds cool, but we'll, we'll see what it looks like. Uh, just to give everybody an idea of, you know, where could this be located? How much would it encroach in the in the front versus in the in the rear? Because there's, you know, th there's a couple of uh, of objectives that are met with that river district and the bridge. Number one, it adds the uh, the residential living and the views. Number two, though, um, it creates far better accessibility to one of our biggest parking lots that's probably the least utilized continuously and that is the arena parking lot um, number three by including a, a scenic pedestrian friendly bridge there um, the they say uh, it's probably a sociological experiment but they say that in people's minds those workers those employees those that want to visit downtown it's far shorter in their minds to cross that bridge to go back and forth than like right now where we get complaints when somebody's got to park a block away and walk you know two blocks uh, north to uh, to a boutique shop that's what they say it, may, it makes some sense uh, especially when they, you know, uh, somebody wants to visit a concert at the arena. Uh, maybe before that, they they want to uh, uh, eat dinner, uh, so they can park at the arena, walk across, eat dinner, and then walk back to the arena event. Or if they're at the stadium and they're, you know, taking in a football game afterwards, they can walk downtown without having to shift their car around and find parking spaces. Um, so there, you know, there are some side benefits to all of this. Um, the the river district, uh, we know one of the partners that we've got to work with or talk through uh, is the Miami Conservancy District. Um, whereas the buildings would be on park property, 
Uh, the bridge would cross MCD, and of course the back of the levee is the back of the levee. They're going to want to know what integrity is going to be left. And so there are ways to, uh, to uh, engineer and construct that where the back of the levee could be strengthened, uh, you know, through concrete bearing walls, whatever, whatever they might be. Um, so there, you know, all those kind of things have to be have to be worked through, and they're not going to be worked through overnight. Um, some of the things that we'll be considering in the 2018-19 budget uh, will be, you know, what kind of additional work do we want to do to get to even get to a point where we can have an intelligent dialogue over whether we want to pull the trigger on something like the River District. Um, MKSK is going to give us those renderings of the 360, but you know it probably behooves us at this point, long overdue. I think you'll agree, Mr. Cappers, that um, we need to, uh, I'll say update, but create, if not update, um, a park master plan. You know, where does the levy fit in our overall park plan um, now and in the future? Um, or what part of it, how much of it, and you know, uh, compared to the other, what, 23 parks that we have uh, since they've developed even over the last 10 years and a lot longer than that. Uh, so having that park master plan would be a key element, I think. Um, getting uh, more, even more detailed drawings on uh, uh, the river district without getting into construction drawings, but to the next level of detail based on any feedback or questions that the park board might have before they're in a position to make any kind of decision one way or the other. Those are the kind of things that, you know, we want to look at having in the uh, 2018 budget and that's what that bullet's all about. Uh, we have, let's see, we've met with the county commissioners, um, the Kiwanis, uh, we are meeting with well, we've met with the chamber, we being certain members of the steering committee. Uh, we've kind of branched out and, and each divvied this up. Um, we'll be meeting with the, uh, the park and recreation boards, the TDC, uh, Troy Main Street, uh, Optimist. Um, we're working on a date for the Optimist. Uh, we'll be presenting to the Rotary next Tuesday. Uh, so you might want to reschedule something since you probably don't want to hear the same thing and it will be much briefer because they talk about a short attention span um, yeah <laughs> like you need a designation uh, but we're just educating people and uh, with this what what this is all about where we're at in the process again with the idea of getting continual feedback um, there is now a survey online that will we will uh, get out to everybody asking for feedback based on what they've seen hopefully after they've had a chance to go through the 97 slides or at least glance through them all they're fairly quick when you got the page down button mastered um, and then going back to the planning commission's um, responsibilities as well as the council's responsibilities is, is really the last bullet as I mentioned, you know, the city is not in a position, nor do we want to be in a position of funding all of these improvements. There's really no need to, but we do need to set the stage, if you'll pardon the pun. Um, so looking at our zoning code, uh, you know, what does B3, what does OC look like? Do we need to have a separate designation? Do we need to look at some more modern ways of thinking? With the branding process, they will have a, what do they call it, a, a design book or a, some design guidelines based on the, uh, the logo and, the, and the, the palette, if you will, and you know, something that's, that we can look at as a guideline when we get some of our more unusual requests from an aesthetic uh, standpoint uh, as in our role as uh, architectural review board. But there are other things that we, we are going to be looking at and continuing to look at as far as uh, expanding our community reinvestment uh, revitalization uh, incentives, tax incentives, um, creating a, uh, a downtown community development uh, 
specifically uh, geared towards redevelopment of um, um, these kind of structures with some funding from foundations seed money from various corporations like they do in Hamilton and other larger cities those kind of partnerships are what we're going to be doing uh, in the long run uh, over the next couple of years actually so again this was 16 slides and it only took me 10 minutes to do it hmm. um, 97 slides they are just go to our website go to uh, Troy Main Street's website there's a there's a button there that you can click um, Greg Harris from our office is on uh, is the co-chair of this committee Wade Westfall uh, who I think most if not all of you know is is the other co-chair so if you've got any complaints certainly contact them if you have any um, positive feedback the mayor and I are always available for that <laughs> as well um, and then of course any questions or comments or and what you're looking for is uh, feedback and comments, not necessarily today, but they can go to that website, click on that, and give them your comments and feedback. Directly. You can, you can, you can do it that way. You can uh, email us. The survey will will have an area that you can comment as well. Okay. Um, you know, the next planning commission you can say, you know, I was thinking about this, and if you guys thought about these kind of of, of things or. Before I could get on board with this, I'd really like to know how you're going to handle A, B, and C. And these are just con concepts right now. Right. Ideas. Generally. What has one of the concepts that's being bantered about about the uh, residential use of the property between the river and the quarry? Uh, that's probably going to direct a lot of discussion. Uh, the bridge over the, the uh, river to go ahead and take care of that. Has there been any? looking at the use of the uh, East Water Street industrial sites and the reuse of those properties and then the reuse, possible reuse of Van Cleve and the residential structures to take, to accommodate those uses? Yes, and and again, this was a summary. They they definitely have <coughs> focused on those, uh, those sites as well. Um, that is, those are key redevelopment areas that they've because if they those were used on. for residential sites, it would seem to me that it save us a lot of money for that bridge there and a lot of heartache about the green space that we would lose on the side of the river. Um, that, that, is, that is potentially true. However, if you look at the presentation online, mm -hmm. the demand uh, for additional residential spaces is more than what the East Main Street properties could accommodate. And, you know, you have to have some contingencies for the fact that some of those properties may not be the most ideal for residential reuse. As I recall, it was more of an incubator type site, wasn't it? That's one idea that they've, they've looked at. Uh, particularly on uh, the Hobart Cabinet site would be a good good possibility uh, you know Ethan Smith is in the uh, the building right next to the soup kitchen uh, he's already been looking at some some different uses and some expansions there as well um, one of the potential sites for the truck yard pop-up uh, would be the parking lot next to Hobart cabinet right next to the, between Dick Steinemann's building and uh, the Hobart cabinet building there along the the railroad tracks. Any other questions for this topic? <coughs> I know that we have the Judification Committee here today. Uh, you are integral members of uh, this community. I would urge you to make your comments and discussion items uh, known on the website or to contact Mr. Harris in the development department about your concerns. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have the other matters se session of the agenda. Are there any other matters coming before the commission? No, we don't. Okay. Does the commission members have anything else they want to discuss? If not, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. We are adjourned.